In this video, we'll work through an example of a max-min problem involving minimizing inventory cost. These problems contain a lot of information, but the basic idea is that what we want to do is minimize the total annual inventory cost that we have. So we know that in a year, we're going to sell 200 bowling balls. So the question is, how often do we need to order bowling balls? For example, we could order twice a year, and we would have to order 100 each time. So we'd order 100 bowling balls, then over the course of the year, sell those 100 bowling balls, and then order 100 more, and then sell those 100. And so the idea is that the more often we order, the smaller the size of the order, and the less we have to pay to store those items. But we have to pay a fee to order that more often. So there's a balance between storing more and having a larger lot size, and storing less and having a smaller lot size, but having to order more often. So that variable that I'm talking about, the lot size, is what we're calling x. So x is the lot size, and that's the size of the order. So the number of bowling balls we order every time we order bowling balls, that's the lot size. So for example, the example I was just talking about, if x equals 100, if we order 100 bowling balls each time, then the number of orders is going to be 200 divided by 100 which is 2. And in general, the number of orders, the number of times we have to place an order, is going to be the total amount that we sell in a year divided by x. In this case, that's 200 divided by x. So those are going to be the two numbers that are going to determine my cost function. Okay, so we're told that it costs $4 to store a bowling ball for one year. And again, the idea here is that if x is my lot size, then the number of bowling balls I have in my inventory starts off at x, so this vertical distance here is x, at the beginning of the year I have x in my storage, and then over the course of the year I sell those bowling balls, and then I have, when I run out, I have to order again, and then my bowling balls go down again, and then I have to order again, and then I sell those bowling balls, and so on. So the average number of bowling balls I'm storing at any given time is actually half of x. If I draw a horizontal line here, that's going to be x over 2. That's my average number of stored items. So when they tell us that it costs $4 to store a bowling ball for a year, well, on average, I'm storing x over 2 bowling balls. So on average, I'm going to pay $4 times that x over 2. That's going to be my storage cost. So my total cost is going to be the storage cost plus the ordering cost. So we just figured out that the storage cost is going to be 4 times x over 2. $4 per bowling ball times x over 2, which is my average number of bowling balls that I have in my inventory. Now the ordering cost is going to be the number of orders, which is 200 over x, multiplied by the cost of each order. So we're told in the problem that the orders cost a dollar, plus 50 cents per bowling ball. And the number of bowling balls we buy is that lot size x. So it's going to be 50 cents times x. 50 cents per bowling ball, and x is the number of bowling balls. That's the lot size. So if I multiply this out, this simplifies actually quite a bit. I get 2x here. And if I distribute my 200 over x, I get 200 over x. And then when I multiply 200 over x times 0.5x, I just get 100. So that's a formula for my cost as a function of x. And what I would like to know is which value of x minimizes this cost. What should my lot size be so that my overall inventory cost is minimized? Well, as always, if we want to minimize a function, we take its derivative and look for critical values. So in this case, the derivative, c prime, is going to be 2. Now 200 over x, we think of that as 200 times x to the minus 1. So we get negative 200 times x to the minus 2, and the derivative of 100 is 0. Okay, the only place where this would be undefined, if I rewrite this, 2 minus 200 over x squared, the only place where this derivative would be undefined is at x equals 0. But x equals 0 makes no sense in this problem. Remember, x represents how many bowling balls we order every time we order bowling balls. And it wouldn't make sense to order 0 bowling balls because we would never fill up our inventory. So x can't be 0, which means that in this problem, this derivative can never be undefined. So now we're going to set it equal to 0 and solve. 
Okay, whenever I have fractions in an equation, what I like to do is multiply both sides by a common denominator to get rid of the fractions. So in this case, I've only got one fraction, so my common denominator is x squared. When I do that, I get 2x squared minus 200 equals 0. Let's add 200 to both sides, divide both sides by 2, take the square root of both sides, that gives me two values, plus and minus 10. But of course, negative 10 doesn't make any sense in this problem because again, x represents how many bowling balls I order. I can't order negative 10 bowling balls. So my critical value that I'm looking at is x equals 10. Okay, so is this a min like I want or is it some other kind of critical value? One way we could find out is using the second derivative test. So we could take c double prime. That's going to give us positive 400 x to the minus 3. And when I plug in 10, that works out to be positive 0.4. Since that's positive and we're at a critical value, a positive second derivative at a critical value means that we have a min just like we wanted. And now the only thing left to do is to go back and make sure that we've answered the question. So the question asked, how many times per year should we order bowling balls and in what lot size? Well, we figured out the lot size, that's 10. And so all we need to do is figure out how often we need to order to make that happen. But we know that the number of orders is 200 divided by x, so that's going to be 200 divided by 10, which is 20. So the solution here is to order 20 times a year, and each time we order, to order 10 bowling balls.